What's cracking, everybody? Zerfell Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, God, another Tapu Fini video. Why on earth is this here? Let me tell you. Tapu Coco is actually legit. It's good in the current Ultra League meta. And I'm not going to lie. I plan to do this video before other people start to bring out their videos. But I can't get the videos out as quick as I can. So I end up being last in the race. That's okay, though, because I say I'm going to go ahead and cover this team anyway. Because this team got me 150 or so ELO. We started in the upper 2100s and finished just under 2300 um, for the evening. So with that in mind, oh, 5 0 4 1 4 1 and some 2 3s in there. Pretty darn good, in my opinion. You might notice that Giratina's rocking Dragon Breath. We do like the Giratina with Dragon Breath in the back, at least as far as I'm concerned, like it's closer. Polyrath felt like a very good core mate to Tapu Koko and also is able to handle a lot of things on the safe swap. So I like it. And Tapu Koko, by the way, very, very frail, as I'm sure you've seen other videos with it. But, um, dude, this thing is so good. It, it core breaks so many teams to the point where it doesn't even matter. Ampharos, one of the things that typically gets beaten here as Nature's Madness is going to be able to hit for heavy neutral damage here, whereas the opponent's move set, except for Trailblaze, is resisted. But the problem is that Tapu Koko is so darn frail that it really wouldn't even be able to take a Zap Cannon even though it's resisted. So what I'd like to do here is <coughs> I typically don't save swap the Giratina, but in some cases where I feel like it just makes sense to try to redirect some energy, I do. Usually when my opponents don't swap out of the lead and it's not a good matchup for Coco, usually means that they're weak in the back. Now you'll notice that my, co my Coco is a trade IV Coco, but you could certainly use a raid IV as well. Um, and normally I would also talk about alternatives. If you don't want to use Coco, Ampharos will do just fine here. Uh, but honestly, if you have a Tapu Coco with Nature's Madness, give it a try. It's actually a lot of fun in this meta. Um, and there's other teams as well out there. There's other content creators. I've already seen, I think, though, Tactical did one. Home Slice Henry's done two at this point. Um, and I'm sure other people have at this point as well. But um, I really wanted to show off this team because it was a ton of fun to play on the stream. And if you want to, I, I, I kind of picked some of the battles from the stream that were more relevant to a video. But if you want to see all six sets get played in real time, raw reactions, no, you know, no over talking or no, what is it, shoutcast, whatever you want to talk about. Um, you can go ahead and check it out on my channel. I keep all of my streams uploaded on my channel for just future watching because I like that kind of concept. Um, I'm going to come in with my Polyrath here to absorb the energy. And then at that point, probably swap back into Coco because we're going to be able to uh, anticipate this Ampharos coming in because it just makes sense, right? They're going to swap in their own uh, Ampharos here because that's all they really have left. Um, as they have the uh, the Polyrath in the back, I believe it has like no HP. Um, I'm missing. I'm not missing something. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we took out Galissapod. Polyrath was there. And then uh, all they have is the Ampharos. So it makes sense for them to swap there. So I go for the instant swap. You see how much damage this stuff does to, to Coco. But because I have a shield advantage, I'm pretty confident that I can land uh, an Icy Wind here before the opponent is going to be able to get to another move. I just need to make sure I get there without them catching on me. So I wait and see. And then I actually am able to counter all the way down and throw the Scald here into the Polyrath, which is an even better win condition here because it guarantees that neither Pokemon is going to be able to get a move off. So able to take that game here. Well played to the opponent. Getting into our next battle with Tapu Koko is going to be on the lead against a Pidgeot. I'm telling y'all, dude, this whole Ultra League meta is like so incredibly weak to Tapu Koko. There's like in the lead, you'll see Water, you'll see Flyer, you'll see Dragonite, and Tapu Koko beats all of it. And it also pressures the opponent to be in a bad spot because they also might have things in the back that Tapu Koko beats. That's why they're not swapping if they have a bad lead and they stay in. And... It's just, it's just so good, dude. It's, I cannot, I cannot. It, I, oh, man, I love this thing so much. It's just such a fun spice pick. And look at that mohawk, man. Look at the mohawk. It's a gosh darn good mohawk, I think. Dragon Claw and get the farm down on Samphoros here. Uh, as we were counting, they were going to be two away from their move. And they come up with a Guzzlord. I have an energy lead, but they can farm me down. It's kind of dangerous. Again, Tapu Koko, even though it resists all of Guzzlord's moves, does not mean that it is impervious to Guzzlord entirely. So the right answer here is to come in with the Polyrath because we can deal that super effective fast move damage, and it's going to add up a lot quicker than the Tapu Koko's Volt Switches. Even though I would love to bring in my Koko, I wanted to save it for this uh, Pidgeot. So now we can get to the Icy Wind because the opponent swaps in without having any prior energy. So 
They shield up the Icy Wind. And at this point, I'm calling a Feather Dance, man. I'm, I'm telling y'all, Pidgeot users love to Feather Dance. And a Brave Bird, I don't know if it would have KO'd, but I wasn't about to take the chance. But because they had just thrown the Feather Dance, I knew that they would be six away from another Feather Dance and seven away from a Brave Bird. So, or is it? Is it six? Is six, six, and a six? Okay, I think it, I'm pretty sure it's seven. Y'all can correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it's still seven to the Brave Bird after the Feather Dance. I know the, the next Feather Dance is one one sooner, though. Nature's Madness takes out the Guzzlord, though, and with a shield, Tapu Koko is dancing happily. Getting into the next battle, Tapu Koko on lead versus Jellicent. Another fantastic lead, and I did not just grab all of the positive leads. I also tried to grab some bad ones as well, um, but that's just how many good leads there were, so... Uh, we're going to go into a Greedent here. The opponent is uh, in a bad spot, I to say the least. They are going to get destroyed in this Polyrath uh, matchup. As I've been on the other side of this many times, I do know that the only way for me to lose this matchup is for them to get a second... Uh, get two more Body Slams off while also um, not getting a debuff, right? So there's no way that after landing that Skull, though, that that's possible as they just get countered down. I can't give them too much free energy before the matchup, otherwise that's possible. If they get to another Body Slam, I actually have to shield, which is kind of awkward. Um, so Jellicent comes back in. They are going to get a decent farm down here. Uh, and a farm down kind of threatens my Giratina and my Coco, so I'm very skeptical about what I want to do here. Uh, and don't get a debuff off the Scald. I didn't really get a whole lot of them, as, you know, we're on stream. Don't get a whole lot of outgoing Scald debuffs. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Icy Wind for the guaranteed drop here. And come in with Tapu Koko, and I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch. And look to maybe no shield to Surf here. If it's a Shadow Ball, okay, but, like, after a debuff, one move won't hurt. I'll just shield the other two um, if I have to. But the opponent has a ton of energy, and they are throwing with good move timing. They go for the Shadow Ball here. And they're going to be able to get to another move. I was going to try to go for the good timing. Hopefully, they were going to get to another move in less than uh, three hexes, but they did. So at this point, I'm just going to go straight for a full farm down here and just hope that whatever's in the back is not good against Coco. And they have an Annihilate. And Annihilate with a fully loaded Coco is going to be a bad time as this Nature's Madness move is guaranteed to debuff the opponent's defense every time it lands. So kind of like Icy Wind, right? Now... Uh, I'm going to go for another one. The opponent is forced to throw their Night Slash or Ice Punch here. They don't have quite a Shadow Ball, but that's a Night Slash. They don't boost, which is huge. If they boost, I'm not sure if the Shadow Ball still KOs me from those counters, um, but man, it would have been close because you see how much damage the Shadow Ball does here. Imagine that twice boosted. Now, thanks to the double debuff of the opponent's defense, though, the Shadow Sneak's going to do well more than enough to KO here. So we're going to be able to take this game as well, and that's going to be a good game to the opponent here. Well played. We're getting to the next battle. Uh, speaking of bad leads here, not this one, uh, but two bad leads that I found. Uh, a third one that I also know about is um, there's going to be Skeledurge. Uh, was very, very difficult to come over. Uh, Greedon is not a fun lead to get over. And also, I had a lot of issues with Sand Slash teams, alone Sand Slash. So I shield up the first superpower here because I know that even from a Dragonite, that still will do quite a bit of damage. And the fact that they stay in means that they're still weak in the back to Coco. So I am going to go ahead and shield, keep it healthy. And the opponent swaps into Charizard, going for the Thunderbolt for the first move, Nature's Madness for the second. And after I get both shields here, I'm going to come in with my Giratina and look to try and farm all the way down here and try to have a Dragon Claw ready for the Dragonite. Now, because they threw right away here, I assumed that they had no energy, and maybe that's true. Um, I also hope that maybe their third one was a five cycle, but instead it was on four. They're able to get the move off, and that feels really bad. But because, once again, they didn't swap out earlier, I'm assuming, again, weak in the back, especially if their best response to Tapu Koko is going to be a Charizard. I'm going to go ahead and come in with my Tapu Koko and save the shield and hope that Polyrath can handle whatever's in the back. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So the opponent now comes in with... Oh, that was a nice one. The opponent comes in with their Dragonite and perfectly catches the Nature's Madness on their Jellicent. I'm going to go ahead and farm up a little bit more here, try to catch a Shadow Ball maybe, but the opponent throws before I can get that swap in, so I will go ahead and let this go. And I'm just going to hope that what I need to do here is simply just try to max out on energy, take out the Jellicent, have an Icy Wind ready for the Dragonite, and also make sure that I'm not low enough for that Dragon Claw to KO. I let the first move go through. I figure they're probably going to launch two Shadow Balls at me, so while I'm getting this energy, 
I may as well let one go shield the next or save the shield for the dragon claw depending on uh, on the opponent now this is quick I feel I'm like I'm 95 percent sure this is surf so I'm just gonna call it if it was a shadow ball then good game but we are gonna be able to get to the ice icy when the opponent knows it they concede good game Get into our next battle here with Tapu Koko. Giratina Altered's pretty awkward, too. Because they outpace you to that Shadow Sneak, and by the time that you get to the Nature's Madness, they're pretty much, like... They're, they're already at, like, a Shadow Sneak and then some. So, it's very awkward, but the opponent lets it land, which really is a nice thing for me, because I can come in with Polyrath, and even though um, they're Ghost-type, this doesn't do a lot of damage. Unless it's a Shadow Force, and there goes the Giratina New! Off into the sky, Giratina goes flying, doing about 60% of my Polyrath's HP, and then they come in with a Tentacruel, shiny Tentacruel with that. Very nice flex by this opponent here. Um, and the thing is, I've seen a lot of trainers scuttle away from Tapu Koko leads with Tentacruel. Like, that's actually not a bad lead for the uh, Tentacruel at all, because that fast move damage from Poison Jabs adds up very quickly and hurts a lot. So, if you're playing Tentacruel lead, that would that would be... That'd be painful uh so i'm gonna go for a dragon claw here before the opponent is gonna be able to get to a move i want to leave them low so they definitely cannot get to a blizzard against my giratina let's go because i'm pretty sure it's a scald here and uh that should take out the tentacruel and honestly with the two of these pokemon they have the giratina they come in they try to get that um next move off man i got i gotta make a call i gotta go ahead and shield this here the opponent now comes in with a cobalion so now we have a game to play i have dragon excuse me i have dragon breath and they have steel typing they have stone edge uh, and their moves are very very fast now uh what i need to do here is i need to just try pull the shields off of this person's cobalion here that's kind of the name of the game here i'm trying not to shield as well and honestly um if i can get this cobalion low enough also remember that the fast moves do damage if i save that shield for tapu coco there's a solid chance here that i just need i like i'm just literally looking to get this thing low enough to be able to take it out now i'm going to shield up a potential stone edge here and then i'm going to try to go for at least one or two nature's madness i let the, i just go for the first one right off the rip because i want to guarantee this defense drop even though i know i give them a full free move and it's not ideal um but look at how much damage that did that leaves the cobalion low enough to the point where i think the giratina might be able to farm down before they get to another stone edge as long as they threw it right away now they try to swap out here that clears the debuff but they're just they're low enough now that the dragon breast will kale before they get to a stone edge and that's a good game getting in the next battle we got tapu coco versus the skeleton urge this is it dude i i have yet to i think i have yet to win against the skeleton urge like this is this is difficult i have to go straight to polyrath right like the hope here is that at some point I can get some energy. Maybe they have something in the back that's weak to Coco. I can get some farm. I can come back in with some fast moves. And they have a for alligator, which is definitely fits the bill. Uh, but I'm so low from taking that charge move from the Skeleturge that I am not having a good time. Now, thankfully, the opponent does get debuffed here. I'm going to go for the Icy Wind for the guaranteed second debuff. It's going to do less damage for sure. But I don't want this thing to have too much uh, damage to throw against me here. I'm going to let this go. Uh, it is a shadow for alligator. This will still probably knock out. It's a hydro cannon almost knocks out anyway Able to take it very low, but they are able to get one more shadow claw And that's what they need to get to this charge move They would have got to one anyway with or without that shadow claw But I'm gonna let it go because it's double debuffed feels really bad to not um, And then I'm gonna come in with my giratina and I'm just gonna hope that we can handle this uh, This is really just a wing it situation honestly Catch a really bad lead like this that kind of has play against most of the team. Now the opponent has Guzzlord, so my only win condition here, and I'm hoping to try and enact it, is to either get both shields from this uh, trainer's Guzzlord, or get one shield, farm down with Coco, and then go ahead and land two moves against Skeletor. So that's my only win condition. That's really the only way that I feel like I can win this game, given the information that I have in front of me. And the opponent is going to be able to get a farm down here, which feels really bad. I was hoping I might be able to get to another move before they did, but they throw right away here, which is perfect for me because that gives me a full free Volt Switch, and they have Crunch, and they can really honestly just come in with Skeletors at this point. They still get, they don't get to another move, thankfully, but the Incinerate is going to do so much damage. I go for the Nature's Madness here, trying to go for that debuff and maybe a move afterwards if I can get to one, but unfortunately, I don't survive the Incinerate. We go down to that trainer. Good game. Getting to the next battle, we've got another Jellicent on the lead. This is where we want to see the Jellicent, because honestly, Polyrath is not 
really going to want to see this at all. So an adjustment that I'm going to make going forward, though, is I'm just going to go straight for Thunderbolt when the Jellicent stay in. I have not had a single one shield, so going for Nature's Madness just feels like a foolish thing to do, uh, especially because I have to end up shielding in this matchup regardless. So from now on, I am just going for the Thunderbolt to knock out. Now, because I am forced to uh, shield that move and that was just a surf, I'm going to go ahead and go for the swap into Polyrath. Opponent goes for the... Uh, swap into their own Polyrath after hitting the Shadow Ball, which feels gigabad, man. Like, oof. Played all the wrong cards there. <clears throat> but getting the attack drop on their Polyrath before they can get it on mine and being able to get to a move here is nice. They do decide to try to CMP, and they do win, which feels bad. But I'm just going to go ahead and take it. Look to farm down with Coco. The opponent does get to another move, and I'm thinking if I can just call this as an Icy Wind, maybe. But no, nah, it's, it's a Scald. That's going to do a ton of damage. Um, and now at this point, I kind of have to go and make a miracle happen, depending on what they have in the back. So I'm going to go for the Nature's Madness here. Um, the Jellicent doesn't have any energy at this point, but they just let it go. And then there's a Talon Flame in the back, and suddenly I feel like I might have a chance here. So the opponent does have shield advantage, but any one of their charge moves, I can easily tank one and possibly shield the next. And then by the time we get to that point in this matchup, I should also be able to... Um, catch a move on Coco if I need to. I just need to make sure that I call it right and not eat an incinerate. The other thing that's worth noting here is that the Volt Switch on Tapu Coco is a shorter, fast move than the incinerate on Talonflame. So at the worst case scenario, if I can get their Talonflame down into range of one Volt Switch knocking out, then that also will be good. And that's actually what this Dragon Claw is going to be able to do for me here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat this move because I kind of have to. I'm going to go for the Dragon Claw after going for as many Dragon Breaths as I can fit into that Incinerate window. Three or four is ideal here. Uh, got the Dragon Claw, and then I'm just hoping that we get there. And even if it was a simultaneous KO because we have Giratina alive, we still win. So good game. And able to pick up a 4-1 here in this set. I must have forgotten to take out this part of the uh, the footage, so forgive me as we sit here and see me climb. But this was the end of the, uh, the second positive set here. We're going to get into some games from the remainder of the, uh, of the stream here. See if I can just kind of speed that along a little bit here. Because uh, nobody wants to watch... Nobody wants to watch me sit in queue for a minute. Uh, getting into the top of Coco against the Bomb of Snow. <laughs> I remember this one. Oh, what on earth am I going to do about this, man? This is just mad. This is madness. This is madness. Nature's madness. I can turn that into like a like a slogan or something. I'm going to go for the Nature's Madness here to do some chip damage to the Obama Snow. And then I'm going to look to go into my Polyrath. Again, forward thinking here, I'm just kind of hopeful that I might be able to put myself in a situation where maybe Giratina's got some energy to throw into that lower uh, HP Obama Snow or Tapu Koko, maybe. But the opponent comes in with a Lantern against my Polyrath. And XL Lantern, if I hadn't already been tired of seeing this stupid thing in, in the Great League, what makes you think I want to see it in the Great League or in the Ultra League? I can't stand it in any league anymore. Thunderbolt, going to KO. And I come in with my Giratina, able to definitely resist all of the energy off this bulky stupid fish. And I'm not really worried about taking charge moves here. I'm going to have plenty of HP. Surfs, Thunderbolts, don't matter. None, none of it does enough damage here. The opponent is going to go for another move here. Looking to maybe uh, burn out their switch timer or just get enough damage in as they can before they swap out. The opponent now comes in with the Obama Snow. And I am ready at this point to commit everything I have into trying to get Giratina to take out this Obama Snow. I will put both shields on the on the floor if I have on the floor or wherever they end up going. Um, but the opponent is not able to get to another move. I'm over farming, trying my best to make sure I'm counting. I assume they threw on one and they threw one before, so they were needing five. And so they go down to the Dragon Claw, not willing to give up their last shield here. See what the opponent has in the back, and they have another Talon Flame. We are going to play the same thing as last time. I'm going to go for as much Dragon Breath damage as we can. I love Dragon Breath Tina. Like Shadow Claw Tina, absolutely fine here. Uh, for what it's worth, for those of you still watching, uh, Shadow Claw Tina is absolutely fine here. I just, I massively enjoy Dragon Breath Tina, and I also shield Flame Charge, which is the like the biggest feels bad moment. Um, also, preference over Ancient Power versus Shadow Sneak. I like Shadow Sneak um, for the most part, just because of the amount of ghosts. I tried to catch a move, but I couldn't make it, man. I tried so hard, but in the end, it didn't really matter. But it's going to be up to the opponent. They're going to be able to farm down my Tina. I don't think so. I'm getting to this Dragon Claw here. And being able to force them to throw the energy was huge because that's going to take out the Talon Flame. And that's going to be a good game here as the opponent's Lantern would just get farmed down. And get your stupid Lantern out of here. Yes, please. Good game. 
Don't get me wrong. Lantern makes sense. I just hate it. All right. We got Dragalge in the lead. The opponent is staying in here, being weak to a fairy type. Perhaps they want to land a gunk shop. The opponent goes for a move after five dragon tails. That is just going to be an aqua tail. I'm going to let the first one go. Um, remember the timing here. We're going to go for two of the volt switches and go for the nature's madness. See if we can get the opponent to either shield or let this one go. I think if they let it go, I'm going to go into polyrath here, but they actually shield up the first one and get a move off so i'm going to shield back and then go once again for two more dragon or two more volt switches rather and then go for the nature's madness and i'm very close to being another one already from the energy gain from volt switch at this point we can hit them and it's debuffed gonna come in with the polyrath we actually also eat the aqua tail which is massive losing all that energy the opponent's dragalgy now reduced to nothing more than just being able to be used for a catch the opponent brings in a pidgeot not really sure what they would do against a steel type here, to be completely honest with you. Um, man, the days of G-Fisk are long over that people just don't fear it. It's a... Eh. I don't miss the pancake one bit, but man, it just, it just, it's just crazy how sometimes things get completely just disregarded because they've gone out of the meta. And then you're like, what do you do against this? And they're like, I don't care. I don't, I don't ever see it. I don't ever see it. So I'm down on out of my shields here. I was kind of hoping that they would go for the Brave Bird, but the opponent does go for the Brave Bird, so Boom. they get the button. But now I'm going to get my Tapu Koko a farm down here. They don't have anything in the back because they have a Feraligator, and they have no shields. I'm going for this Thunderbolt right now, and all they have in the back is the Dragalgy. Boom. And we're going to Dragon Breath it down and then take the game. Well played to the opponent. <coughs> Getting into the next battle here. We have Tapu Koko on the lead versus Sylveon. And I don't know what I'm going to do here because this Tapu Koko does not just survive charms, right? So I'm going to have to try to remember what the timing is on this thing. And I'm, I'm hoping that I get it. So thankfully, the opponent doesn't sneak a whole charm through because half the time I mess that up. And when I get to that many moves, as good as move timing as I am, but the opponent actually lets it go. The Sylveon doesn't shield the Nature's Madness, and that's actually huge because that allows Polyrath or Giratina to have just enough play to hopefully be able to do something about it. Now, the opponent safe swaps immediately into Feraligator, a very bad matchup against Polyrath because Polyrath just eats all of the energy, and the counters coming from the Polyrath are stab damage. I mean, same type of tag bonus. That is going to give Polyrath a little bit of a damage edge here in this matchup as, this, as the uh, fast moves add up much quicker against the Feraligator. And I do shield this one up just because I don't want Giratina to have to come in and farm down the Feraligator. So I'm going to go ahead and go for a Scald here to try and knock out the Feraligator. Or the opponent maybe lets go of their last shield to try and maintain this matchup. They do not. I think they're going to come in with their Sylveon here. And I'm prepared to be very sad about that. But... The opponent actually comes in and shows me their Shadow Swampert, and I'm going to go and swap on five Mud Shots to catch that Hydro Cannon on my Giratina, where it's not only resisted, but also allows me to keep something going on my uh, Polyrath here, and the opponent's low enough, the Running Charm. I'm going for the Dragon Breath. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And now we've got a ton of energy to throw Dragon Claws, and also I can save my one shield that I've got remaining for the uh, Polyrath to just get to a charge move against the Swampert, which is exactly why I let this go here. And honestly, the Hydro doesn't even knock out, which is crazy. Um, the, mud, the Mud Shots will uh, farm down here, but there won't be enough for the opponent to get the two moves, which is what they would need in order to KO. So I'm just going to go for a move as soon as I get it. Opponent also going for a move as soon as they have it, but I'm going to shield up. It's CMP tie. I'm going to be able to take out the opponent's Swampert with this Icy Wind. And with that, we're going to close up shop here on this scary, scary team. I mean, double water in the back was kind of nice, but the Sylveon honestly terrified me because if it gets past Tapu Koko, I have nothing else to deal with it. So good game to the opponent there. Picking up another 4-1 set. We started off with the uh, stream with a 5-0, and if you guys don't check out the streams, please do subscribe to the channel if you like the content as well. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and we're going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.